But the Court of Appeal at the High Court yesterday ruled uh, that the government's policy on expanding uh, the airport with that third runway, which is not just sort of adding you know, a third, it's effectively a whole new Gatwick airport to all intents and purposes uh, at, at Heathrow. The court ruled yesterday that the government's policy on expanding the airport was unlawful because ministers had failed to take proper account of how it affected Britain's climate commitments. This is particularly the Climate Change Act and also the net zero uh, by 2050 carbon emissions uh, pledge. But a refusal to properly consider the UN Paris agreement, which limits rises in global temperatures, well, is aimed at limiting rises in global temperatures, uh, was legally fatal, the judges said. This has a massive knock-on effect for every other airport project in the country, road projects, rail projects and any energy projects as well. The government said it would accept the ruling. It's still not known yet whether or not a Heathrow uh, will decide to actually uh, appeal that decision, although very likely that they will. Well, we'll get the thoughts of Dave Chorn and Russell Quirk uh, on that in just a couple of moments. First up, though, Let's talk to Caroline Russell, who's London Assembly member and transport spokeswoman for the Green Party. Good morning to you, Caroline. Good morning. Um, now, you and many other uh, Green activists have, have been campaigning against uh, the uh, the Heathrow sort of runway. I mean, basically, you know, since before some of my listeners were born, it's been going on for that long. Um, big victory for you yesterday. But the knock-on effects of this are huge, aren't they? Well, I think it, it, is, a, it is a massive victory. And the, the, the expansion at Heathrow, I mean, Londoners have been campaigning against that on so many grounds, on noise grounds, on air pollution grounds, um, you know, people being overflown by, by planes, waking them up at night very early in the morning. So there are lots of reasons why Londoners are not keen on expanding Heathrow Airport. Well, can I clarify? Can I clarify? Some Londoners, some Londoners are very keen on it, particularly the local boroughs are closest to Heathrow. They're actually very much in favour of it because of the extra jobs. Well, can I just say, I mean, in the London Assembly, every single political party is against Heathrow expansion. So, so? because of the impact on Londoners, that's, that includes the, the people who were UKIP, it includes the Conservatives, Labour, the Lib Dem and the two Greens. So it, it's not, you know, it's not that odd a, a, a position to take. And in terms of um, uh, climate change, we're currently seeing the impacts of changing weather, of, um, of more extreme weather all across the country. Your um, uh, intro at the, in, in just around the news, there was a whole thing about um, you know, more flooding uh, happening and the worries about this new storm that's coming and whether it's going to impact those flood-hit communities. Yeah. The, the impacts of climate change are really having... Sorry, the storm... No, no, so, so sorry. The, 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 Caroline, my, dar my darling, the, the current storms and the current flooding we've got have got nothing to do with climate change. It's to do with the jet stream and the Arctic vortex. Do you, do you, I mean, do you, do you not understand these things? I thought you're a Green Party act, uh, campaigner. Surely this is stuff you should know is your bread and butter. The point is... No, no, you do accept that, don't you? No, you've just made... No, Caroline, you've are just... going to be more frequent if... You have uh, climate change. The IPCC latest report, last report on that, said there was a, I think it was low, was it, what was the phrase? It's not low probability, but uh, low uh, expectation that uh, that they could, that that was actually the case. There, there is, there is, there is no direct correlation, and there's no proven causation between those things. We've actually not seen an increase in extreme weather uh, around the world, whether it be droughts or flooding. We just see it in different parts of the world. It is different to be more aware of it because we have 24 seven. TV news now. But look, let's just go back. Let's go back and talk. You must have heard the communities around Worcester and Shrewsbury explaining how they never have had floods like they, this. They, they, they have had floods like this before. Flood after record breaking flood. We've no, they, the Caroline, they have had floods Australia. like this before. They, they have. That's they they have. haven't had them with the frequency and the intensity, and that's the point about climate breakdown. These, this extreme weather is right. becoming more common Let's, and, and more It's frequent. Okay, okay, so it's not. But, but it, I'm, I'm sorry, to, I'm sorry to keep throwing facts at you. I know this is going to be throwing you. But, OK, let's, co let's come back to the implications of this on major infrastructure projects. Now, we've got HS2 going ahead, something which I, I definitely disapprove of, um, uh, because I think it's just not good value for money uh, economically for this country. 
Um, but I mean, but even that. even a project like HS2, which is rail travel, which you know Greens are supposed to be in favour of, uh, as opposed to ra- rail or sorry, as opposed to road or air travel, um, even that could be hit uh, under this Court of Appeal ruling yesterday, which would suggest that anything that contributes to um, uh, more carbon emissions could be ruled unlawful under the current terms on which the government is allowed within its own terms now to, to behave. Um, we've got China. By 2025, China is planning to build 137 whole new airports. Now, I'm not saying we want to be like China. It's a totalitarian state. They don't care about things like planning permission or, or, or pollution and things like that. But... There must be some middle ground between, you know, insisting, for instance, on on quieter aeroplanes, on on fewer emissions, on limiting the times, and like which could be done around a Heathrow third runway that, that would allow us the economic expansion that that would entail, and the economic boom and the jobs, but wouldn't have such a major impact on on pollution. I think the thing is, what we have to do is rethink our economy completely. Business as usual is over. And we have to get on and invest in the renewable energy, the things that are going to make people's lives better, make their homes more affordable for heat by having better insulation. There is a massive task to be done to actually uh, improve everyone's homes, to uh, make sure that we've got low carbon transport options. That's going to create jobs. That's going to create a whole new economy. And that's the stuff that we should be doing. Um, do you think that there's an issue, though, in terms of this sort of... Vir- I mean, not many people will call it sort of virtue signalling by the British government, which actually has no real net effect. Even if we did, for instance, get to net zero emissions by 2050, even if that was feasible, we'd probably only do it by cutting our own manufacturing, cutting our own air transport uh, and, uh, and and road transport, but at the same time basically transferring that overseas. So, for instance, we won't build an energy plant here. We'll just import it from another country where they may be less green. Uh, we're going to be importing more goods uh, from China, where we know they are, and in India, where we know they're far less green than we are. And actually, ultimately, the, the net of effect on the world's uh, carbon emissions is going to be higher rather than lower, while we sort of bask in the glory of the virtue signalling of how well we've done at cutting our carbon emissions. The point is, if we're going to cut our carbon, we're going to do it by making our world better. And our world what does that will mean? be better with more renewable energy and with these good new jobs that are going to come out of, um, out of making everyone's life Caroline, better. could you address the point I actually made to you? Well, you, you are trying to make out that... We, that if we don't build a third airport, a third runway at Heathrow, that we're going to um, end up with uh, importing lots of bad, dirty energy from somewhere else in the world. But actually, what we could do is make our world better with lots of very affordable, renewable energy. That would make people's I'm, lives better. I'm all in favour so of making the world better. That sounds like a great idea. Heating bills who are living well, in well, fuel poverty. Well, hold on a minute, actually, Caroline. You, wait, wait, wait. Great po- heating bills have gone up because of green taxes. And they'll go up even more because of more green taxes. When you start taking away people's gas boilers and people have to have far more expensive electricity heating boilers, that's going to put their bills up. Not if their homes have been properly uh, have been properly insulated. No, it's nothing to do with insulation. The cost of the energy is higher. If we're going to tackle the climate emergency, we there have one. a mission focus. We will have to have a mission focus on sorting all this stuff okay. out. Can I, can, I, can I bring you back to the question I've asked you now? <laughs> if, if it is the case, say for instance, say we don't have the third runway at Heathrow, but then those flights just go through Schiphol or, or another airport, those flights are going to happen. If we want to get an international flight to somewhere uh, which you know, relatively obscure in China, uh, that we, we're going to have to get you know, a, a flight and do a connecting flight using far more carbon, far more energy... Uh, and the same for the transport links, the cargo links. Um, if we're not going to be able to build energy plants, we are going to have to import it from elsewhere. We are, if we're not going to manufacture things here, we are going to import them from elsewhere. I mean, we can, we can want a better world. I mean, we are the world. We are the children. Yeah, absolutely. We're all in favour of that. But in terms of the practicalities, what you're talking about is us basically virtue signalling about how great we are, while at the same time actually creating probably a bigger carbon footprint around the world. Do you not accept that? Don't you think it's important that a, a, a 
country like, um, like you know, the, a place like the UK, mm-hmm. that we are doing absolutely everything we can to protect future generations. And could, you, could you please answer the point I've made? I mean, if you want to say, yes, it's OK, we are going to actually cause greater carbon emissions in other countries, but in return, we're going to be a world leader on this in the UK... I mean, I think that's a strange position to take, but uh, but at least it would be an honest position. Do you accept that my point is valid, or do you think my point is invalid? Well, uh, personally, rather than build, I mean, you're you're saying, oh dear, this judgment means we can't build um, pretty much anything more dirty power stations. Well, actually, we need to be investing in the renewable energy that will actually um, deliver energy and not. Okay. Wind, wind and work. solar power is a tiny percentage of our energy needs at the current time. You can't produce steel using solar and energy. I mean, I mean you, you and the Green Party, you're opposed to fracking, which is the cleaner and fossil fuel energy. You're opposed to nuclear power, which is a very clean energy. Could you just? I mean, we're running over time, but would you be? Would we you? Are, do, would you? Are. Would you? Would you be very kind and answer my point? Do you accept that the policies that you want to clean up our carbon emissions in the UK may actually overall have a net effect of? increasing carbon emissions around the world. Do you accept that or not? No, I don't. You don't accept that. We, so, we have to we have to create good, clean energy in this country, and we can and how, do it. And how are we going to do it? How are we going to power our steel manufacturing and uh, and, and everything from, from, from solar and wind? Uh, there's wind power. Um, you know, there's what, percentage, power. what percentage of our power currently is produced from wind? Uh, ooh, this I've is your area of expertise. Read that tells me that every single day that mm-hmm. I um, uh, there's a Get, I mean, roughly, not not to one percent. Within the nearest, no, no. There's a Twitter so, you can follow, Julie. Ca- Caroline, you Caroline, this is this is your is produced um, every hour this, of the day. No, 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 I'm not oh, asking within a point of percentage. Within ten percentage points, what percentage of our of our current energy needs are produced by by solar and wind? Rough, I mean, it roughly. It literally varies. It yeah. literally varies. It's a, it's a point um, worth making, hour isn't it? Hour. So, mm-hmm. um, roughly I, over the year, roughly within ten percentage points. It's. Uh, I am. I'll just, wait while you Google it. It's okay. I'm. I am literally scrolling through Twitter mm-hmm. trying to find this lovely Twitter feed, which I will send to you afterwards. But you. But all due respect, you are a transport right spokeswoman for the Green Party in London. This is this is your bread and butter. I mean, you know, it's a tiny, but it's a it's a small percentage of electricity, and electricity is only thirty percent uh, of our energy needs in this country. So it's 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 a very very low percentage uh, of of our energy needs in this country that are produced well, by solar power. Do you really think that by twenty fifty we are going to be able to produce all of our energy? I mean, it'd be great if we could. But do you really think we're going to be able to do that by 2050 without having to import it from another country? So you're, you're opposed to the energy being produced here in any other way? What I'm saying is we need to be, rather than investing in more dirty energy, we need to be investing in cleaner energy. And um, it's, you know, you, you've, things like Transport for London... They only use 0.01% of renewable energy at the moment. They could be doing so much better. The mayor could be investing in power okay. purchase agreements that would actually invest in shovel-ready new renewable energy projects. This, All right. you know, we have to do better across um, every area of, 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 our, okay. of our lives. Caroline, we're going to have to leave it there. I'm about five minutes over time. I really appreciate you coming on and talking to us. 